Alright guys, back for another week and back for another episode of the Championship Transfer Rumour Round that we've got managerial speculation, done deals and a bunch more transfer rumours to jump into in today's episode. As always, any other thoughts, make sure to leave them down below with any other rumours that you've seen going on around the EFL. But without any further ado, let's hop in. And I don't think anyone expected this news, but Neil Warnock set to continue as Huddersfield manager for one more season. Huddersfield set to be left in a bit of an awkward situation with Warnock leaving and we all spoke about them needing to get that next managerial appointment absolutely spot on but it seems as if he's willing to give it one more year in the dugout now Warnock's impact at Huddersfield towards the back end of last season was nothing short of miraculous a team that looked dead and buried he had them performing like a playoff outfit with the amount of points they picked up in such a short period of time I'm hoping that this one doesn't have vibes of you know, Harry Redknapp at Birmingham, if we remember when he came in there a few years ago, saved them towards the end. He was then given the full-time managerial job going into the next season, and that's when things started to go a little bit wrong for him. I'm hoping that won't be the case with Warnock this time around, but Huddersfield fans will surely be happy about this news. And we had a bit more managerial news. Sean Maloney recently been linked with the Swansea City job. Now, Russ Martin's still expected to move over to Southampton, but a few of the finer details holding that deal up at the moment when it comes to the compensation package and how much Southampton will actually be paying Swansea. So Swansea very much on the hunt for this new manager. And Maloney's an interesting link. We spoke previously about the links that Swansea had to Stephen Schumacher, who's done a brilliant job in at Plymouth. And Maloney, I'm not quite sure about this one. Don't get me wrong, I actually think that for the situation he walked in on Wigan, he actually did a fairly good job despite them being relegated in the end, but I think we all expect that with that point deduction they were hit with. But Swansea weighing up a few options at the moment, and we're seeing Kieran McKenna being linked with a few jobs at the moment. Ipswich fans, I'd be interested to know how you're feeling right now and how secure you think you are in terms of keeping hold of McKenna going into this season. Now, it's no surprise to see a few top clubs being linked with him. After all, he is a promising upcoming manager who's just had a brilliant season in League One style of play, everything on top of that. Well, both Leicester and Celtic have reportedly shortlisted him as a potential to come in next season. In terms of Leicester, the pull they have, a parachute team coming down from the Premier League, the resources they'll have. And if everything is set up correctly, it is a great chance to instantly bounce back to the Premier League and be managing their next season. In terms of Celtic, there's the lure of European football, how big the club actually is, and you could argue a greater stepping stone to a big Premier League job from Celtic. You know, we've seen with Postacoglu and Brendan Rodgers in the past. But it is worth noting as well that this project that McKenna's got at Ipswich at the moment is also hugely exciting. So if all of those offers were to be on the table, I'm really not sure which way he'd go. In terms of some done deals, we did see Rob Dickey completing that move to Bristol City. We touched on this one on last time's video and we expected the deal to go through. Well, it has since been confirmed. Really good bit of business, I think, there from Bristol. Bristol City. And we also touched on this one in a previous video, but Ross McCrory also moving over to Bristol City. We'll be interested to see where they predominantly use him next season for Aberdeen in this season, just gone black by. He's played in a variety of positions as a centre half, a right back, wing back, or holding midfielder. Middlesbrough have snapped up Terrell Ajiman upon his release from Manchester City. Looked like a promising player coming through the ranks there, and the 20 year old will join up with Michael Carrick's squad for next season. Season. Defender, fairly versatile, can play in a few different roles. Sunderland have completed a deal for Nectorius Tarantis, I have to say a wonderful name, but he's coming over from the A-League and another example of the type of recruitment that Sunderland have been really good at over these past couple of years, 20 years old centre-half. He's going to be a player who they look to develop and yeah, an interesting scouting network. We don't tend to see that many championship clubs going for players over in Australia but he's clearly very highly rated represented the Australia under 20s but he's clearly very highly rated he's represented the Australia under 20s on 10 occasions so far and has been building up his CV in the A-League but those are some of the done deals we've seen go through in the championship over the past few days now without any further ado let's jump into the rumours now a couple of videos ago we did speak about the Premier League interest in Sunderland winger Jack Clark will Burnley have since lodged a 7 
seven million pound bid for him, which is expected to fall well short of Sunderland's valuation of the player. But it will be interesting to see if Burnley do go back and forth with a bit of interest in Clark. Obviously, Burnley themselves still holding an interest in Nathan Teller as well and bringing him back on a permanent basis. But it remains to be seen how much Southampton would be prepared to sell him for. When it comes to Clark, Sunderland very much hold the cards when it comes to dictating his transfer value. He's contracted with the club until 2026 and so they're in no real need to sell. He's just coming off the back of a really good season for them where they made the playoff semi-finals. He's part of a young core which is going somewhere at the moment so yeah I'd expect a significantly higher bid to be made if Clark was to be going anywhere. The latest reports out of Leeds United have claimed that Rodrigo has a release clause in his contract following Leeds' relegation of just three million pounds. He's only got 12 months left to run on his deal at the club and is expected to leave this summer but Leeds would make a substantial loss on the player if that release clause of just three million is correct. They originally signed him in the summer of 2020 for a then club record fee of 27 million. He probably had his best season four leads in this year just gone by scoring 13 goals and getting an assist reportedly so Real Madrid are even interested in the Spanish international. We're seeing plenty of Premier League interest in Southampton captain James Ward-Prowse but reportedly so the Saints have slapped a £52 million price tag on the midfielder. The likes of Spurs, Newcastle and particularly West Ham do hold an interest in the midfielder but surely they'd be a bit more reluctant to go in with an offer of above £50 million considering Lloyd Prowse um, is now technically a championship player. I believe the most money that a relegated club has ever sold a player for was Bournemouth when they were relegated. They got about £42 million for Nathan Ake from Manchester City. I believe that's the most a club's ever got for a player when they've been relegated to the championship. And if Southampton were to stick to that price tag of above £50 million, that would be a new record. I feel like each video we do of these at the moment, Victor Jokeres is going to be linked with a different club, no matter how many we end up doing throughout the summer. But the latest club to announce an interest in the Coventry City forward are Sporting Lisbon. I think with all of this interest, the Premier League clubs, several who have been linked so far, it's only going to go ahead and drive up his price tag for when he does end up leaving how much Coventry actually get for him. Shadozi Ogbeni has emerged as a target for Sheffield Wednesday and I'm sure this one would leave a bit of taste in the mouths of Rotherham fans if a deal was to go through after all the drama we had last summer with the Heckway and Smith both upping and leaving Rotherham to go to Sheffield Wednesday. Obviously Ogbeni is out of contract currently so is free to evaluate his option. The versatile Irishman scored eight goals, got four assists last season and we've already seen plenty of championship clubs register an interest but of all the clubs he could go to I think if he does make that move to Wednesday Rotherham fans won't be too happy. Joel Latabadir has been linked with a move to Luton Town I'm expecting Luton to do quite a bit of their shopping in the EFL as they gear up for the Premier League and someone like this would represent a cost effective option to come in as a little bit of backup as a player with potential as well obviously he is out of contract at Swansea come the summer and as things stand is expected to look for that next club. Bristol City have done plenty of business so far and they're not done yet. Hayden Roberts, the latest player they've been linked to, in talks with the Brighton defender to potentially move over on a free transfer. Spent last season out on loan with Derby in League One, where by all accounts did really well. Uh, grew in importance to that side as the season went on. Fairly versatile as well. Spent the majority of the season playing as either a left back or left wing back, but is also comfortable playing as that left sided centre half as well. And at only 21 years old, you can see why a club like Bristol City would be interested. And that transfer dealing could also relate to Joe Bryan. We did previously speak about Bristol City's interest in bringing him back to Ashton Gate. Well, it's since been revealed that that will no longer be on the cards as Bryan himself is angling for still playing um, abroad, obviously. Spent uh, this season out on loan in uh, League 1. Hasn't had the best of loan spells there, but by all accounts, he wants to give it another crack at playing abroad for this next upcoming season. Two unnamed Premier League clubs have expressed an interest in Swansea City forward Joel Perrault and looking at his numbers over these last couple of years in the Championship, it's no surprise. 22 goals and then 19 goals last season. Only 23 years old and the crucial thing, only has one more year left to run on his contract with Swansea. That expires in 2024 and as things stand, doesn't look likely to extend his deal with the club. So Swansea... 
probably more than likely to cash in on him this summer or they'll be left in a similar situation to what Blackburn were left in with Brayton Diaz where his contract ultimately ran out and they saw him leaving on a free transfer. So with one year left to go on his deal that expiring in 2024, Swansea fans, what sort of fee would you be expecting for a player like Perot? Great numbers he's put over the, up over these last couple of years and I think what makes a player like Perot attractive is a lot of those chances he often creates for himself. He's got a hell of a left foot and also quite a clever player with how he brings others into play as well. If you've been following the story of Amari Hutchinson over these last few years, you'll know just how highly rated he actually is and the Chelsea youngster is set to be allowed to go out on loan to a championship club this summer. So I'm expecting a hell of a lot of teams to register an interest. Now, Hutchinson was heavily linked with the move to West Brom in the January transfer window on a loan deal, but in the end that didn't materialise. The Chelsea youngster capable of playing as both a number 10 and a winger. Um, I mean, watching his clips and his numbers in youth football and things like that, you can see why he is so highly rated. Millwall have reportedly lodged a bid for QPR forward Lyndon Dykes, which could rise to 2 million with add-ons included. Now, if you've been watching the channel over the last year, you'll know I do have conflicting thoughts on Lyndon Dykes. I think he can be a handful for defenders and for a more direct side like you know Millwall perhaps I think could be a decent option wins 4.8 aerial duels per 90 and is good at bringing others into play and does offer a lot of their untangibles. Where a player like Dykes does fall down though is that goal scoring record. Uh, he scored eight goals for QPR last season, but going off the XG numbers was the second most wasteful player in the championship last season. I think a player like Dykes can work in the right system when you have other goal scorers around him. So looking at that Millwall squad, for example, I could see a potential partnership there between Dykes as that hold-up man and then someone like a Zian Fleming, who's more of a goal threat, looking to play um, off him. And, you know, Dykes, that could potentially work as a partnership. At QPR, there were a lot of frustrating moments. I, and I think a lot of other QPR fans had with him last season. But to be fair to him, towards the tail end of the season, he did come up with some big performances and even in games where he didn't, you know, contribute with a goal or an assist and he still played well. For that sort of player, though 2 million does seem a little bit steep to me but I'd, you know we'd have to know the full ins and outs of the deal and how much Millwall will be playing paying up front and how much of that would be in add-ons etc and Preston are in talks with Everton over a potential loan deal for Tom Cannon once again obviously for Cannon to be loaned out to the championship it would have been dependent on Everton's survival in the Premier League that has gone ahead and happened and Peter Ridsdale revealed in an interview that it's his gut instinct that Cannon will be allowed to go out on loan to to the championship once again and obviously Preston hoping to be at the front of that queue. Callum fantastic last season, 20 appearances, 8 goals, 1 assist. Once he properly got his feet under the table at North End, I mean he ended the season with an absolute flourish. I would love nothing more than to get him back on loan for another season as I do think he is guaranteed goals and over a full season I think really could be deadly. My only concern is this is going to be another repeat of the Cameron Archer situation where Archer did brilliantly for us in the second half of the season we wanted to get him back we were in talks with Aston Villa but a team further up the championship food chain swooped in for him and obviously Middlesbrough uh, did get him in the end but Cannon expected to go out on loan I just hope it's Preston that get him. Norwich City are reportedly interested in Reading playmaker Tom Ince. A few videos ago it was revealed that Ince has a buyout clause in his contract of just £50,000 so it is available on the cheap for any championship club that is interested. Did put up decent numbers to be fair last season for Reading. My only concern is I do feel like with Int at this stage, you get a bit more out of him when he is sort of a big fish in a small pond um, in terms of he was the main creative force in that Reading side last season. But when you throw him into an environment with other stars and creators and things like that, I'm not sure he quite thrive in the same way sort of similar to how we saw his time at Stoke being really disappointing but Norwich are obviously looking for a cost effective option to go ahead and replace the creativity that they've lost with Kieran Dowell and someone like Ince would offer that whilst also bringing a bit of experience obviously they've gone down that route so far uh, with bringing in Ashley Barnes so yeah we'll wait and see on that one it is looking more than likely that Morgan Whitaker will be on the move this summer just depends on where that next destination is in January there was a lot of interest from 
Rangers, but ultimately their bids were knocked back by Swansea. Obviously had a great loan spell in the first half of last season with Plymouth and their interest in taking him, along with Coventry and Sunderland, who are also interested in the Swansea forward. But guys, there we have it. That will now wrap it up for today's video. Thank you very much for tuning in. As always, any other rumours that you've seen going on around the Championship, make sure to fill me in in the comments down below. Apart from that, though, guys, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.